Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is going to be part two of the 1949 Willie's Hood where we do body work without body filler. We are going to jump in on the details of what it takes to get something metal finished. Um, if you guys have not seen the video, we will link it up in this banner here. Check it out. This is what that video will show what the start of this hood looked like. Maybe we'll throw in a clip real quick. This hood was severely damaged. I mean, pick hammer everywhere. It had so much stretch in the thing from what started with a little bit of oil canning. And today we want to just take where we've progressed to and then show you how we dial in the little things, how we get that hood to where you have such tiny little bit of body filler, if any, and the more time that you spend in this stage is what's gonna be the most critical. So you guys definitely will wanna watch this to the end. There's gonna be a lot of little things. Keep in mind, the whole reason that we do these videos is for the little details. If you're gonna watch the video and think of this as just some overview where if I just buy a shrinking disc, all my problems are gonna be solved. All of these tools and things that we use on the regular are not, they come with an art form and you have to pay attention to the details that we talk about to be able to perfect these tools. Today is gonna to specifically be showing a lot of shrinking disc and uh, heat shrinking, but specifically heat shrinking without using like a torch We've done all of the different ways and we're gonna give you guys the details and the pros and cons of why you wouldn't wanna use that. So that way you guys can do a how-to in your own garage and fix your own things. So to give a brief overview, we have done patch panel weld-in repairs on this hood. We've already talked about how when you fit something perfectly, you do not want to try to weld a panel in when the whole hood's all out of whack you wanna get the hood back to as perfect as you can, as relaxed as you need it to be before you weld in your patch panels. And then when you have a perfect butt weld and you're gonna TIG weld it in and or MIG weld it if that's what you have, uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna heat up and rise and then it's going to shrink just below where you started. So the next thing you know, you have an oil can or you have a sunken low spot and maybe you have some oil canning. Something you need to know right off the bat is if you have something oil canning, you are close to having it fixed. Don't go to the extremes of thinking that as soon as it oil cans, you're throwing in the rag and holding up the white flag. You're, you're close to being perfected. You just have to know how to assess it. So for this hood, we have already started metal finishing this side. So I'm gonna show you guys with this is blue Dicom layout fluid, um, we'll have Check out the description. We'll have links for some of these tools, some of the blocks, the hammer dollies, whatever we're gonna have be using so you guys can order the stuff and do this on your own. Um, we are going to be taking a hard block and we have 120 grit on here. You can use whatever grit. If you're metal finishing, obviously a little bit finer of a grit is gonna help you for trying to remove sand scratches later. But it's close. We've taken a lot of the damage out with hammer and dolly, shrinking down the excessive highs. And now we're just gonna show you how we get the very minute changes. Because even if you get a shrinking disc and you start shrinking it, if you go below where you're perfect, you'll also get an oil can and you'll fight other battles with that. So you don't have to use necessarily a huge block in the metal finishing stage because you're doing things so minimally across the entire panel where if you were doing body filler and you were block sanding this hood, the block would be a lot bigger for your panel. Here, when we take this thing and we scuff this, we're making very minor changes. So I want you to recalculate your thinking on when you're using a long block and you're trying to make something smooth, we're doing it with about a 16th to an eighth inch at a time with a hammer and dolly. Every strike of that hammer and dolly is only going to move something very minimal. And if this block is going to show us where our highs are, you're only going to shrink with the shrinking disc in that little area. That is why you do not need a huge block when you're metal finishing. So we're gonna zoom you guys in closer to this hood here 
and I'm gonna take the block and scuff the hood and show you where we are currently with our highs, our lows, and we're going to take the two and we're going to bring them back down nice and level. All right, so when you're trying to evaluate a hood, you can see we've resprayed the dicum in the areas that are darker or where our lows were previously. But as you start to work the hood out, you may need to reapply the dicum so you can re-see where your highs and your lows are. If you're not constantly using dicum in what you're doing and a block, you are going to lose where you get this thing completely metal finished. So we're gonna take this block, it's a hard block from linear blocks, and we are going to... You can see this thing is already oil canning. See that? And that's what most of you guys struggle with and nobody really understands how you correct it. So we're going to get rid of that with the shrinking disc. So just take your block. Sometimes if it's oil canning, you might have to hold the hood. That way you can block it. There we go. And now what you're looking at is you are looking at the fresh dicum. We have everywhere that we have hit that is the high. And all of these little details are what's gonna hold up your metal from being relaxed and where this starts oil canning. So you have to be very precision with taking your highs down and bringing your lows up. And it's okay if you overstretch something a little bit and or shrink something just a little bit too much because you can always bring it right back with one or the other. Obviously, we're gonna use our hammer and dolly to stretch and we're gonna use the shrinking disc to shrink it back down. And keep in mind, we kind of talked about it in the last video, um, but the more that you rub with the shrinking disc, the more heat you are going to create in the panel and the more shrink you're going to get. It is rubbing on the high only. You want to lay this thing parallel with the panel and as you are learning, do it in little increments. Maybe you bring your hand in and kind of lightly touch it to feel the heat. Just know the more you heat that spot, the more it's going to shrink down. Something else that we will do um, is we will flip the hood back and forth so we can shrink maybe the backside to help us level it out. Not always do you get that option, but for this particular hood, we do. Maybe your hood has inner structure. You might have to remove the inner structure of the vehicle to be able to metal finish something to this degree. It just depends. We are going to be talking in the end of this video about some of the struggles we have had learning this. Uh, what happens if you use a planishing hammer? What happens if you use an English wheel? and how that can go completely sideways. None of these tools are just a buy it out of the box and perfect it. This all takes a level of skill and it takes practice. So pay attention to the details of this video, buy the tools, try it out. If you fail, go back and watch the video. So here we go, we're gonna bring you back in and we are going to come in and we are going to just rub this high. So right now we have this super loose and oil canning. We're gonna come in with the shrinking disc and we're going to hit just these. And what you're going to see uh, is the shiny is going to go away when we rub the shrinking disc and it heats it. What I want you to pay attention to is we're gonna give it a 10 to 15 second count after we shrink it. And we're just gonna give it a quick cool with the rag and it has to be completely cool. What you're going to see is that when we come back and we re-block, you're going to notice that the block is no longer going to hit the high shiny spot it's going to hit just on the outsides of that, and that is going to slowly come down. You don't want to add a bunch of heat to something when you're in this stage and you're just trying to dial it in little by little. Another reminder, we've talked about it in other videos, you need a 6,000 RPM grinder to run this stainless steel shrinking disc from Ken Sakamoto from Sun Chaser, or any other shrinking disc. If you have something that is too low of RPMs, it's not going to do the same effect. And if it's too high of RPMs, you're gonna kill yourself because that's a serrated blade. So here we go. Come on in and let's watch the shiny heat up and move down.
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now, if you guys paid attention when we put the shrink disc on here, it's so close that it already was oil canning in while I was trying to use the shrinking disc. Um, that's okay, just know you're watching the shiny. You can see where the shiny is no longer, and we have rubbed it with the shrinking disc. And what this did, we didn't heat it a ton, it was just a very small amount. And now, we're going to take our block again, You'll notice the main shiny area that's hitting is right here, here. It's barely hitting here anymore. It's hitting in other areas. Just that little tiny bit has shrunk this minimally to where the next area. And what you do is you're going to have to swipe this every time with the block so you can see how the metal starts moving around as you shrink it and as or you uh, stretch it. So now we're going to come back in with the shrinking disc and we're going to hit these spots a little bit harder. Sometimes if you need to put something under the hood or in the panel to keep it from oil canning and giving it a little bit of strength so you can precision hit those high spots, then that's what you need to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have a little bit of heat to this, not a ton. It, you know, you kind of have to play with it, but you swipe it. You do not have to hurry up and cool this. You can take your time and cool it. It needs to cool naturally. You're trying to let the heat dissipate out slowly and then cool the exact same way. Now, when we take our block back in, Notice how it's hardly hitting here. So we're gonna add a little bit more heat. This is where you learn to dial in the shrinking disc. You swipe it, you heat it, you check it. And this is slowly bringing this all in. You'll notice, I already noticed that I don't, it takes more pressure for me to push this oil can in. It's these little inconsistencies that we're going to get. So we're gonna come back in and we're gonna rub it a little bit more this time to create a little bit more heat, give you a little bit more shrink. Now we have, we have definitely created some more heat there. The other thing is if you are using a shrinking disc and you, you run the thing on a quick angle and if you get into this area where it's darker, where it's low and you shrink that, well guess what? It's gonna shrink lower than where it already is low. That's why you have to stay on the highs and keep your lows alone. Again, we didn't rush the cooling. We let the heat dissipate out. And this takes time. This is not something you're just going to run through. Dry it. You can come in. Now here's the big, the big takeaway here. Check it out. This is where we were specifically seeing our high. I just re-rubbed it. We added a little bit more heat and it completely is not touching the block. Now it's only touching the block right here and now it's touching over here where we were not touching at all. So you're going to start connecting these areas that shine more and more, and the closer you get, the more time you spend, the more perfect you can get this. Or maybe it's good enough for you and you can skim coat it with filler or use a high build primer, whatever it is you're gonna do. We try to take these as far as we can go with the budget that we have, so we're gonna continue to shrink this down here and here 
to dial this in. If you take the shrinking disc too far, you're gonna have oil canning as well, and you might have to come in and check. Well, here's another good note is, if you are dealing with something, the other thing is, check this out. It takes a lot more pressure to push this oil can in too. If you have an oil can issue, what you can do is opposite of this block being short, you can use a longer block very lightly and skim it. Let's say this was an oil canned area that's going in low and you're going to see a perimeter of shiny around the area that's hitting. You're only going to want to shrink with the shrinking disc around that perimeter, not the center. If you shrink the center, it's just going to continue to go down more and become more and more firm. You have to bump things up. If it's severely down, you might have to grab a dolly and bump it up from the backside to get things to start hitting. It's just dialing it in, jumping around the panel, little bit by little bit until you have a nice smooth surface. And when everything is done, shrinking disc is done, your hammer and dolly work is done, you can start DAing this with 80 grit, 120 grit, on up to 400 grit until you get a nice mirror in metal, if that's what you're doing with metal finishing. Obviously, if you're gonna do body and paint, 80 grits where we're gonna prime. So it just depends on what you're doing. Um, as you work these lows, maybe they're too low and they're just not going to completely go level with just a shrinking disc. So that's where you're gonna have to come in and you wanna start from the perimeter of your good metal and work inward. So if you come in and look at say this low right here that we have, I would put my dolly underneath, hammer on dolly, and I would start stretching in these areas that are low. Around the perimeter, do not start in the center. Because then you're gonna balloon the center too much, where if you start working from the good metal, think about it like a ramp. You wanna slowly bring up close to the area that's already good and work in towards the bad. Do not rush to the center. Take your time and just work it. You can also see we have some pretty excessive highs out here. You want to collectively move around and slowly start bringing it in. If you think about this panel as a sheet, okay, and wherever you are shrinking it, you are doing this. You are bringing it in 360 degrees around each thing, and if you have that mentality, think of every piece of sheet metal as a sheet that you are shrinking only in those spots, and think about it, if you're shrinking right here, what does it do to that corner? It starts pulling the metal in, in all directions, until things are rigid enough that they're not going to oil can. And that is how you fix it. So earlier in the video, I just talked about if you have access to the back of the panel, you can do one of these bits where you bring up and make it back to where it's level. Well, this area is low. And something that you can do is we're gonna flip this hood I'm gonna take a block and I'm gonna hit the other side. It's gonna show this being the high, right? We're gonna flip it over and then we're gonna hit that side and do this bit with it. Now, take our trusty block again. Now you get a perfect representation of where we need to shrink the opposite side to bring these highs down and level. You don't always get this luxury of having it, but maybe you got to cut the panel off to get to it or take all the factory spot welds out. I'm going to shrink this now and bring these highs down to help.
keep in mind too, when you're using a shrinking disc, that hood might start popping and moving because you're heating it up, you're expanding it. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. When you cool it or as it cools, it's going to relax back down to that same state you started with. And it might get tighter, it might get looser depending on what your panel is doing. So this whole thing, I got the whole area. You can kind of see where our patch was a little bit. This hood was really, really bad. We're just going to cool it down. And you do the exact same process we showed you on the backside. You're just trying to take the two pieces back to the shape that it was. Now, with that being said, if you are on a low crown roof or a hood or a fender, whatever it is, you have to remember that a shrinking disc is going to take you, if you take it far enough, it will take you all the way back down to completely flat, brand new sheet metal before it was ever formed into a hood. That's why it's important to use your block and work that area out and know when to stop. As you start seeing all the areas come to life and show, you're done. If you get it so close, it's perfect, and you did too much heating, and it sunk in and oil can, well, now you're back to hammer and dollying and bringing all those back up. So we're gonna just reiterate the details of the hammer and dolly and show you guys on the other side. Okay, so we've dived into the shrinking disc. Now we're gonna dive into the details of the hammer and dolly work. Specifically, we have recoded this with Dicom to show this particular low that we have. And this is where we want to come in with the dolly directly below in these areas just to the inside and as these start to come up we'll block it and we'll show you how these will start showing and then we will slowly work inward you're bringing this in slow now it's okay that if you overly stretch this maybe you went a little hard with the hammer dolly or you're still trying to grasp that because even if you excessively stretch it on accident the shrinking disc can come right back in and knock it right back down that's the great thing about this is it's just practice i recommend grabbing a flat piece and just practicing. So again, to reiterate, hammer on dolly. I know I'm beating this to death, but a lot of guys are not gonna get this. So you're listening for the very high ping. And when you come in here underneath, <laughs> the rag's all stuck in there. You're, you're gonna wanna search for it. So if we know we need to bring up this area, right? We're going just inside of the shiny. I'm just barely, I mean, just a finger on the hammer, just, and you can hear the difference. Once you have found it, you can move the dolly to adjust. And once you've found it, you don't move. You put slight pressure on the dolly upward. And this should be something that you're locking your elbow with, and you're just using your wrist to hit that spot. Hammer on dolly is stretching the metal upward. So I know it seems backwards because I'm in a low, smacking the low, but it's actually going to bring it up. Right there, so we'll bring it in. Gotta find it again. Now it only takes a few strikes for you to actually make movement. You see how that started showing up? That was not there. And I'm purposely overstretching this. This is where it comes into how many strikes are you doing? How hard did you hit it? That's gonna move it more, just like the shrinking disc. The more heat, the more you move it down. The harder you hit the dolly, the more it stretches, the more it moves upward. So. As you get used to hearing it hammer on dolly and you can move around, we're going to now take this area and we're gonna move right next to it and just keep working this up. Again, you might feel it and it feels like a bag of walnuts. That's okay. You bring in the shrinking disc and you just level the ground right back down again. But you're bringing your area that needs to be stretched up. Now, 
See how more and more of it is showing up? That's the big key. Pay attention to here. And when I feel this, this feels just ever so slightly high. The other thing you really, really want to consider is if you have the option to mount whatever panel on a wooden buck, maybe you just make a frame so everything is held sturdy. With this thing, we have no inner structure and we really don't have very many places to make a frame. And we're trying to leverage things like planishing hammers if we can, because a planishing hammer is the exact same thing as this, except it's doing it thousands of times all at once. And so that's where I wanna talk about the pros and cons of using different tools to your advantage. Don't think that you're gonna grab a planishing hammer if you don't understand this concept and just smooth the whole panel out like you see on Instagram or on TV or whatever it may be. You have to understand that right now, for as example, we know everything in shiny is level and flat. Well, let's say you grab a planishing hammer, you match the crown of the panel to the planishing hammer die, and you run that through here. Well, as you're running that planishing hammer through here, what is it doing? It's stretching the metal just like we just showed you. But if you are not keeping that planishing hammer inside your low and you're running it across, you might have brought the area that is low up, but you also brought everything else that was already perfect and ballooned it out. Now, I'm not knocking planishing hammers by any means because I use them on the daily. However, you have to understand how they work. And to me, a planishing hammer goes hand in hand with a shrinking disc because I can actually come in here. I showed you how to do it manually by hand but I can actually take a planishing hammer and I can run this over this a few times and then I can take this block and run it back over it and I can take the shrinking disc and I can shrink out the areas that got overstretched. So you have to use it to your advantage, but understanding how metallurgy works, how heating and shrinking metal affects the panel, how welding it affects the panel. Now let's take it to a different scenario. Let's say you put this in an English wheel and I'm not a proficient at English wheeling yet. We're getting better and better all the time. But if you start using an English wheel to roll this out, so like your dough, if you're making a pizza and you're rolling it out with your roller, it's going to smooth it out, but it's also stretching. So again, it's the same exact concept. If you run the English wheel through here, it's going to stretch the metal more in the area that's already perfect. So how do you compensate for that with an English wheel? Get really good. It's harder to create a shape with an English wheel that is a low crown than it is to create something that has a high crown, a lot more shape. So it takes a lot of practice and tracking with your wheel to get it to look uniform. Sometimes if you're doing a big hood, we might run the whole thing with English wheel with just a slight pressure. And I might run over with the planishing hammer just to kind of dial things in. We slowly been working from the front to the back with the shrinking disc and this thing is super close to perfect. So at this point, you could do one of two things. You could hammer and dolly each one of these little lows out of here and that takes a lot of time. Or in our case, we're probably going to run this through the planishing hammer a few times and bring up these lows and then we're going to just start rubbing things with the shrinking disc until this is completely flat and mirrored finish. From there, we will uh, we'll have a perfect hood, but keep in mind, we still have to weld the inner structure back in this hood. And when you do that, you are going to warp this entire edge, depending on how good you are at welding. The more heat you put in it, the more it's going to warp. So maybe you're MIG welding. MIG weld it, stack it together, cool it with air, keep the heat as low as possible, and always remember what happens when you weld. It doesn't matter what kind of welding you're doing, it heats and then it shrinks. Every weld when you're done is shrunken and you have to restretch that out. So if we know everything on the hood is done and mirrored finish, and then we come back in and we start doing welding in those areas, we just know we have to come back with our hammer and dolly and stretch out that area that is welded. Grind down the majority of the weld and when it's close, hammer and dolly it back to the shape. Everything else will take shape with it. So that's kind of the quick overview in detailed version of how you get these nice good finishes without having excessive filler. Maybe you spend enough time in this stage that you can just use a high build primer and that works for you.
some of the next videos that we're going to be doing is different hoods with different scenarios. This hood was excessively stretched with a pick hammer that was a lot sharper than that. The next one we're going to show you is a Pantera hood that's all sandblasted and how it, the sandblasting warped the whole hood and how we're going to bring that all back into smooth as well. So guys, please subscribe, like the video, hit notifications. Until next time, hope you guys learned something. Share what you know and continue to learn. See you guys.